All right, so I'm gonna try to make a, a pizza scene in Indonesia that everyone likes. So I think I found the right mix of ingredients that will bring you a good pizza scene to Indonesia without all the sugar, all the chabe. So I thought of making a pizza marta box, but with the pizza on the inside. So the idea for the pizza, I couldn't find spring rolls, it's hard to make. The idea for the pizza is I'll make a pizza with similar ingredients, green onion, garlic, but I'm going to use sausage instead of beef and I'm going to use green onions on the pizza. So it should be good. Let's do this. All right, so I'm gonna make the pizza with, I'm gonna use two bowls. I'm gonna use a dry bowl and a wet bowl. Just so mixing them is really nice and easy. So it's three cups of flour. The dry bowl is the, the dry bowl is the big bowl. With all those pizza bread ingredients. Three cups of flour. It's like a easy California dough. Pizza dough. Not the same as ketchup dough. Three cups of flour. Some salt. I don't really like salt. I'm still going to put pizza, I'm still going to put some salt. Alright, right amount of salt. The pizza needs some yeast, salt, all-purpose flour. That was the first one. The pizza needs some yeast, nutritional, I mean baking yeast. Instant dry yeast, high activity. So... One tablespoon. Detail. So I just want the rest of this yeast. And that makes your that make your dough rise. Make your dough fluffy. I also have to use baking soda and or baking powder and it's not the same as yeast. Put the rest in there. And it's not that much. I think it's enough yeast dough, pizza dough. It's not soft bread. That's pretty much it for the dry. You got your dry ingredients. Here, I'll mix it right now. So look, it mixes real nice, nice and easy. Nice and easy and all together. All right, one cup of water. 
already put it in. Like I said, I already put it in. Just one cup. And two tablespoons of the finest Borg's virgin olive oil. One put two two tablespoons of the virgin olive oil. It's also for taste. It tastes a lot better than the other other oils you'll be using for pizza. It's not that much olive oil. Come on, guys. Two tablespoons. Alright. To get this, the water and the oil don't really mix. You gotta mix it with the other stuff. This is the dry bowl in the wet bowl before I'm getting ready to mix, put the wet bowl in the dry bowl. I just want to keep things controlled. I'm going to mix them. I'm going to stir. Pretty good. I think I'll need more water. Doesn't look doughy enough. Well, maybe, maybe I should keep stirring. Maybe I should knead it a little bit. Doesn't seem like it has enough water. Kind of too floury. Uh, I think I'm going to take it to a kneading board and knead it and see where it is. Maybe it'll be better. Let's see. Right. If you need the dough, you got to knead the dough. You need the dough. And let's face it, folks. I'm not rich. That's why I'm doing YouTube. So I'm going to need the dough on my cutting board. I don't have a pizza kneader. I don't know fancy equipment here. I need the dough with my bare hands like you're supposed to need the dough like I really need the dough All right. yeah I guess the dough is pretty good so it is true I need I needed to need the dough I didn't need more water like I thought at first still kind of Still kind of think it needs a little bit more water, maybe. Well, I want to do some good kneading. This is how you knead. I show you some some good man kneading. Oh yeah. <laughs> when you really need the dough, you gotta knead the dough. You push the dough. Oh, it's getting a little sticky. That makes me think. Makes me think I don't need more water. Just maybe put some some flour on my hands. Make it less sticky. Or actually, you know what I can do? I can put a little bit of oil on my hands. But first, I'm going to wash my hands because it's starting to get sticky in there. All right, this, this is a secret. It's not positive thinking. Got oil on my hands. 
I'm gonna need that dough. You know it's sticking now. Now I'm needing the dough like a pro with the oily hands, the lubricated non-stick dough. How long should I need the dough, folks? Yeah, throw the dough. Throw the dough. This is how we need the dough. We need the dough so bad. We need it. We need the dough. Alright, it's getting a little sticky again. I think it might be time. Might be time to put a little bit of flour in my hands. A little bit of flour. Get, get it nice and floury. Oh, yeah. Get some floury dough. Alright. Oh, now the dough is floury. Oh, look, it's starting to look nice and meaty. You want me to do the poke test? I don't really know how important the poke test is. You poke it to give you the perfect pizza dough. Let's poke it. Oh, look. The poke test. Does that mean I passed the poke test? I thought it was supposed to pop out. So I think this dough will be good. I don't know what you think. What do you think? Respond if you think the dough will be good. Alright. As you can see, my hands are not that sticky. I kept it under control. I think I'm gonna put the dough. I don't care about the, the poke test, folks. Let's poke it. That's gonna be some good dough. You can tell, you can tell this is some quality silly dough. Look, catch your dough. That's why they call it pizza dough. All right, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator where it belongs while I prepare the rest of the pizza. I'm now going to attempt to tackle the sauce. I'm going to put for the Indonesian sauce. I'm going to put a whole garlic in here. A whole entire garlic. I'm going to carefully juliet the garlic. Uh... So, just get a little bit, clean up a little bit of these skins. All right, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna cook my sauce in this bowl right here. Cause it's effective, it's efficient. It also, More convenient. More convenient. So, I'm gonna blend the tomatoes so I don't have any of those skins. Blend it into a fine puree and then add the julietted garlics into the sauce while I'm cooking the tomatoes. So the sauce will be a bunch of tomatoes. The sauce will be a bunch of tomatoes and garlic and salt and pepper. And this is my Indonesian 
Let's see if that. Not adding any of those Italian herbs and oregano. Not even adding cilantro or onions or anything fancy. I'm looking for a basic Indonesian pizza. That's a scene without all the chabe and all the sugar. You can hear in the background my fans are calling me. My kid fans outside of my house. That's what it's like to have fans, you know? When kids come to your door and they they yell boo way and, and you play with them and it's fun, but it's a little bit much. But love the kids. Kids are good. Right, I'm just carefully taking all the skins off of these garlics. Let me skip ahead. Okay, I've traveled in time. Some peeled garlics. I'm gonna Juliet these garlics. Well, I'm actually gonna cut it in half, let it sit. I'll carefully Juliet these garlics. Do you Juliet something so it's not too small? You get that flavor it's intact. You don't crush the flavor and put your flavor all over the cutting board. And it's the reason we do this, we cut it small. The little tiny bits. When you have the little tiny bits, it spreads the flavor. The, the flavor is still packed in the tiny bits. You're not crushing your garlic and spraying your garlic juices all over the place. So that's why that's why a five star restaurant Juliet their garlic. Also it's just efficient. It's just effective. It's just convenient. It's actually easy julietting your garlic. So I'm not the fastest at cutting garlic, but it's actually pretty easy. Alright. So that's the julietted garlic. I'm gonna skip ahead in time. Okay. I'm gonna cook these julietted garlics on the lowest heat possible while I get my tomatoes ready for my pizza tomato sauce, Indonesia, Tassim, pizza tomato sauce. Look at that action, folks. So I got a bunch of tomatoes. I'm not sure if it's enough. I got a little bit more for tomatoes. I'm gonna put these tomatoes right into the the blender. I'm just gonna cut them in half. Uh, maybe I'll cut them again. Cut them into fourths. Plop it in the blender. Blender. I'll cut the butt off. Cut off the butt. The potato. They don't need that. Cut in fourths. Alright. So that's what I'm doing. Cutting the tomatoes. Put in in the blender. Cutting the tomatoes and putting in the blender so 
I get a fine puree. I don't, I just throw it in the blender, blend, keep blending it until I have fine puree. I don't have to worry about peeling all tomatoes. Tomato skin tastes fine, tastes better than fine. Tomato skin is a fine, nice, beautiful taste of the tomato skin. Blend it into a fine puree. Blend out that skin. Those beautiful insides of the tomato. Yeah. These tomatoes are from the neighborhood. They have a little store near my house. This is an advertisement for the neighbors. We have beautiful tomatoes. The other ingredients were bought at Yagya Supermarket and the neighbors, various other stores, including the mall and Tassic, where I got the olive oil. But I see you can get the olive oil at Yagya now, too. But I think it was cheaper when I got it at the mall. It wasn't a million dollars. It was like six dollars, I think. So you might have got it in Bogart. I don't remember. It seemed like I had a good amount of tomatoes there. The tomatoes, they cook down, they don't cook up. They blend down, cook down. So, we're gonna see. We will see. Log in the blender. I'm just putting any top on the blender because you know how I roll. But I need a little bit of water. A little bit of water a lot of times in the blender gets things going. They're definitely juicy tomatoes. Let's just add a little bit of water. Get this. I'm putting only tomatoes. I want to see the tomatoes all tell you when you cook something the water comes out so the water will come out I just want these tomatoes to go in the blender There's now you can see we got some good blended tomatoes we're gonna blend these tomatoes into a fine tomato blended puree can see folks look I got the garlic cooking on low heat the tomatoes blender in look out lowest heat possible look at these garlics look at this lowest heat possible oh man oh man oh man Order for some fine garlic cooking on the lowest heat possible. Okay, I put on my Captain America muscle shirt, so you know I mean business. America. Okay, I got this pot. Guess what I'm gonna do? I got this finely pureed tomato juice. Then I'm gonna turn the tomato sauce by cooking. I'm gonna pour it right into the pot. I'm gonna take it over to the fire, fire it up. I do say, I do say that is some perfectly cooked garlic. So I'm gonna put the garlic into that sauce thing. Put black pepper, garam, salt, and a little bit of chave powder. Just a pinch of chave powder. Uh, the chave powder 
is a darker, drier, less punchy taste, but it's still chabe. It's used in a lot of cooking everywhere except places where they have a lot of fresh chabe. But it does have a different taste. It's still really good. All right, let's go. It's nothing fancy. It's just basic sauce cooking. Basic sauce cooking. Bring it to a boil. Bring it to a simmer. Cook it until it's the right color and the right taste. And be ready for sauce. Tomato sauce for your pizza, for whatever. Yeah, I added, I added five, four or five tomatoes. Kept one for my wife. Let's go. Decided to mess with my sauce. I want the flavor to boil and the other flavor. I'm gonna add some black pepper and some salt. Let's get it in. Let's get it in. Remember, it's Indonesia. I don't want too much black pepper. It's pizza anyway. That's probably good. Let's stir it. It still smells very much like fresh tomatoes. So... I'm gonna wanna cook it more. I didn't even try it yet. I'm gonna put in some salt. Be careful with your salt, kids. It might look like a lot, but the way I did it, it's not really a lot. I just kind of sprinkled it in. I'm going to give it its first try before I put a little bit of chavi powder in it. Let's, let's try this tomato sauce. Tomatoes are a little bit strong, a little bit super fresh taste. Definitely need to cook it more. Probably need some more black pepper. I'm gonna put a little bit of dried chabe in, not too much. More garlic might be, might be smart too. So it takes a little bit to protect your sauce. You got to just kind of taste it bit by bit. And make it oh, pinch, pinch it, chave. Then you want a little bit more salt. It doesn't have that salt aftertaste that is really, really a salt. All just about the salt aftertaste, really. It's all salt is. The salt aftertaste. All right, salt lots are starting. I'm gonna take a break. Okay, the sauce is kind of stormy. I, I added some more garlic. I think I'm gonna add some coriander, maybe some sugar. I'm cooking it down. We wanna get this right, folks. So I added the coriander and it's pretty good. The tomatoes are a little sour. It's cooking down. It's stormy, folks. I'm gonna add 
I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar to cut the sour and it should be done. I got the wife approval. <coughs> I think I did it. I think I made the Indonesian Essene gourmet pizza sauce. Okay. We have a regular Indonesian electric oven, so I'm gonna preheat the heat the oven to full heat. This ain't no rich oven. I'm preheating this oven all the way up. You hear the ticking in the background. Sauce is still on the is now on the lowest heat possible. I'm gonna start doing the artistic part of the pizza. I want that that flour bottom. The flour bottom. For that floury bottom piece. There's me sprinkling this flour right on the bottom. Sides too. I don't know if I'm gonna go all the way to the side. I just want to be careful. I really want to make a square pizza, but here we are. And the bottom nice and flowery, making a bit of mess, but that's okay. It's pizza, folks. You see in the background, we got some, some mushrooms, some sausage, which is thawing out right now, and some green onions, all classic, authentic Indonesian taste before a pizza or a scene. Let's do it. All right, I'm going to get my other hand all nice and floury, as you saw before, the flour protects them. A little bit crusty, like it was in the fridge too long or something. I think it'll be good though. I'll give it an extra little knead. A little extra knead. That's not what I want out of the dough, is some crusty on the top. I mean, it's gonna be crusty anyway. It's pizza, right? You don't need. You don't need some refrigerator crust on your pizza to make it crusty. Alright, let's split the dough in two. This one's a little bit bigger. Split the dough in two. Plop the dough and plop the dough. So, I kind of want to make a thin, thinner pizza. I don't really need pizza roller, I guess. I don't have a flat surface. I guess I could use my cutter. I'm going to show off my pizza skills right now. I'm a pizza skilled pizza person. I'm just going to show you my pizza skills. My thin pizza skills right here. Pizza. But I'm gonna flip the pizza and get this pizza nice and thin. Pizza. 
से आओ वे I'm getting a little bit serious about this pizza dough. Seriously, this is a serious pizza show. It's a pretty good pizza. I'm gonna work on getting it thinner by pressing it on the, the pizza tray. It's pretty round. second pizza I'm not gonna show it because I'm a pro yo I'm gonna dethaw the sausage while I cut the vegetables and the mushrooms I'm gonna do a little technique that most people don't know about and put the sausage on the skillet in a pan lowest heat possible Tiny bit of water. Maybe put the lid on it and make it a little bit more even. I don't really want to steam it or fry it a little bit. Okay. Vegetables. After I cut the vegetables, I'm going to grate the cheese. I'm going to leave the cheese in the refrigerator so it shreds easier. Yes, I'm going to leave the fridge in the refrigerator. 
which shreds each other. Okay. I already washed the onion. Actually, no, I didn't. Cut these onions regular style onions. Not a little bit smaller than that. I don't want too many of these really. They will be good. I don't want it overflowing with green onions. I'm gonna cut them all so I have stuff to work with. These are some nice onions. Fresh, nice fresh onions. Look, good till the end. Good all the way till the end. Except the little pointy part. I'm gonna eat those. That's how we do it. Nothing goes to waste. Eat the onions. Put these green onions in the bowl. That's right, green onions in the bowl. All right. Look at these. These are the best mushrooms. I don't even like mushrooms. These are the only mushrooms I'll eat. Don't give me no other mushroom. I don't like them. I don't like mushrooms. I will use these mushrooms. They're pretty good. I'm just going to bake the mushrooms. I'm going to cut off the butt, the mushroom butt. At a good place. I'm not going to mess around with these mushrooms. This isn't a show where we must mess around with mushrooms. Alright. There's no mushroom mess around show. Alright, looks like we're ready to dress the pizza with the sauce. Alright, I'm going to apply the sauce to the pizza. I could just use a spoon. Uh, I'm going to use this. It's a nice tool. You want an even sauce. Pizza. Even sauce, not too thick. You want it to cover everything. <coughs> Even sauce on your pizza. I want to cover everything. Or, I mean, you do want it to cover everything. I'm going to dress the other pizza that you can't see a little bit. Make sure I get enough of the sauce. But this is also the main pizza. I want to make sure the pizza is well dressed. You don't want. You don't want a naked pizza with no sauce. Naked pizzas are cool for a little bit, but then you have a sauceless naked pizza. You're just trying to cheat. A sauceless cheating naked pizzas of the world. 
or Alfredo sauce pizza. I need a basil pizza though. Oh, Alfredo sauce pizza could be okay. Remember, we're making an Indonesian pizza. So we don't want too much of this. We want, this is an artistic pizza, the perfect pizza. We want everything to be perfect. There's no room for error. Indonesians, they have the best food. We need to make the perfect pizza for their Indonesian tastes. There's no room for error with this pizza. No room for error with this pizza. It has to be perfect. Indonesians demand perfection. The best way that they see it. So that, that is what I call a well-dressed pizza. That pizza is dressed well. That pizza has clothes. That pizza's going to the ball. That pizza's going all the way, yo. There's a little bit of a fancy pizza, but we're going first class pizza tonight. The Perfetto. Cheese is cooled so it's easier to grade. We'll do some big cheese grating. Right. That might not be the best way to grade the cheese. This is what I discovered last time I did it. I'm going to use this thingy. Remember, we're professional here. We're not playing around. We just want the cheese to melt evenly. Smells pretty good. Let me try it the other way. Might not be the best cheese grater for mozzarella. No. Maybe I'm thinking I should Juliet my mozzarella. What do you think, YouTube? That was funny, but now it's time to be even more serious. We're not playing around. It's time to cut the cheese like a cheese whiz. This is how you Juliet your cheese.
Basically the Juliet of cheese. Let's have a moment of silence. We all know the cheese part. It's sticky and stubborn. I'm gonna decorate the pizza with the cheese. Like, these are the best cheese pieces. I should have just kept it for that. Let me fill this out. Fill out the potential mistake. Some good cheese pieces. The cheese will melt, we just don't want any lingering cheeses. Should have should have stuck to these ones. They're the best ones. Cover the most space. I'm adding a good amount of cheese here. Make sure this pizza is well dressed. This pizza is going to the ball. I just put some of the extras on top. We don't want any. We don't want any holes in our cheese. Still a little bit worried if there's cheese holes. I'm gonna inspect the pizza quickly to make sure I didn't make, there won't be any holes in the pizza of the cheese. Thanks. 
move move a little bit around on the gaps. Make sure I'm not missing anything. I think it's pretty good. We have a smaller pizza here. I'll take care of that. I'm gonna put the pizza. I'm gonna put the pizzas in and melt the cheese a little bit, and then melt the cheese a good amount, and then I'm gonna add the toppings one by one, starting with the mushrooms, and then the sausage. I'll put a little bit of chabe on the smaller one for the the folks. Now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put the green onions on, and we're gonna see how it is. These sausage, they're pretty good. Nicely grained sausages, cold heat, de thawed, all the way de thawed. I'm just gonna line up these sausages. I'm gonna go to sausage town. I'm cutting some, some thin, perfectly cut pizza sausage here. The cheaper sausage, that's good. Fiesta, I am sausage, chicken sausage, good for pizza. I'm just good. I'm just gonna cut those sausages. I'm gonna eat. Eat the sausage butts. Mmm, that's some good sausage right there. Perfectly de thawed sausage. Oh no. I dropped a piece of sausage, but I'm cutting three sausages, so it's fine. And some good sausage. Let me eat the end of these sausages. You can see the cheese is starting to melt, especially on the top one. I'm gonna put these mushrooms on. I've applied the mushrooms on applied the mushrooms on the first pizza. It's smelling like pizza. I might have waited too long, a little bit too long. I took a shower while I was baking the pizza. The bottom's not ready. But it should be okay. Remember I did basically fry the sausage. So I didn't want burnt up sausage like last time I made the pizza. So the aim is that this pizza will be better. I'm putting it, kind of crunching it into the, the soft spots a little bit. Spots that are still soft. Remember the sausage, as I already said, the sausage was basically fried a bit already. Oops, I don't want to crunch it too much now, do I? That would not be good. So it basically looks ready. It's probably eatable now. Uh, I want the sausage on there. Lots of good sausage. Sausage. I think the sausage is the the Indonesian all-star. Kids love it. Adults like it. And you get plenty of that good chicken sausage on the pizza. Oh, that was a little crunchy there. A little bit too much. So oh, that's good. See the other one got some chabe on it. That's that's a little bit more like the right time you want it. The little one might be better actually. 
but I think it will be real nice anyway. Get some nice Fiesta Indo sausages on there. Be real tasty. So the amount of sauce I put on this one is good. You don't really want too much sausage, a sausage overload. You can be meat lovers, but you don't really want the sausage overload. It's not that good. I'm gonna put it in for a little bit, let it get all juicy, and then I'm gonna put the green onions on. And that baby that baby will be dressed, ready to go to the ball, king's ball, ball in Indonesian pizza, ball in Indonesian Indo a scene pizza. Pizza Indo a scene. Okay. Applying the green onions. Applying the green onions. I forgot to show you the the the, the sprinkle on top uh, because I was focused on finishing the pizza. Finally, I want a good amount, but not too much. So that looks like a nice. It's a beautiful. Indonesian pizza right there, almost done. I'm gonna plop it in. I made this beautiful Indonesian style pizza with all the perfect Indonesian style ingredients. Made as perfectly as I could. And I hope it's good. I hope you like this extravaganza marathon epic video about making the Indonesian pizza. So I'm gonna be trying this pizza with my family and let's see how it is. It's, it's a really good pizza and the sauce is a little bit tangy, maybe some more coriander or uh, dried onions or a little bit of sugar to cool down the sour tomato. But it's really good. Uh, keep improving my pizza making. Really good tasty pizza. Okay, I got the verdict. The more I ate it, the better it was. It's really good Indonesian ingredient pizza. Mom really liked it. Uh, Baba liked it. Ibu liked it. Uh, the wife liked it. I liked it. There's some criticism about the dough. The dough either needs a different dough, cook faster, or we need uh, the same dough, maybe cook slower. Maybe put some some uh, flour around the size, but really good Indonesian Asin pizza. It's good with chabe too. I didn't put much chabe. Maybe on the bigger one, it was still good. Pizza is always good with chabe. Just chabe straight cooked on the pizza is really good. Because then your pizza is spicy. 
there's plenty of other ways to add chave to a pizza but the ingredients were really good ingredients were on point uh so i'm happy with this pizza i hope you'll be happy with the pizza bye bye folks so it was good ta 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 bye bye